Welcome back to The Daily Rundown, where I'm joined now by the Mascara Queen, Nina Lakind. Uh, an introduction, Nina, tell us about yourself. Oh, well, I love the introduction, Mascara Queen. That's a fabulous start. Um, I am obsessed with mascara, and I certainly have been on a mascara mission with my brand, Ico. Um, I'm the founder of it, actually co-founder with my husband, and the creative director. And I believe uh, Ico, with makeup companies, you know, they do the face, body. Yes. You concentrate on the Just windows the to the soul. Absolutely. That's all we focus on. So magazines like Vogue and Vanity Fair say we're the go-to brand. For and you've got eye people makeup. like Alexa Chung designing yes. stuff for you as well. But tell me more about you, because um, I noticed quite a, a, a slight slant, a transatlantic twang to your voice. <laughs> so, you know, because you haven't always been in cosmetics. I believe you started in PR. I started out in PR, which is actually how I met my husband, Max, who is American. So I suppose his accent has rubbed off on me. Um, but yeah, started out in PR. And then together with him, actually, we started ICO together many years ago. But the last four years saw us have a brand refresh and really mm. focus on eyes only. And what got you into the beauty industry? Because, you know, to leap from PR to setting up your own company and, and making your own uh, makeup, that must have taken a, a big shift. Well, in for PR, I was looking after a lot of beauty brands, um, hairdressers, personalities, so I was very much involved in the marketing of the brand. I'm also from a creative background. I have a degree in fine art, so I was always kind of looking to do something more creative, and I obviously a makeup junkie as well. And my husband, actually, he's always been in beauty. He set okay. up his first beauty brand when he was 19 with his friends in LA. Um, it was called Card Candy, which is like a massive 90s brand, yeah. kind of charged with changing the landscape of beauty um, at the time. Do you remember the film Clueless? Yes, with Alicia Silverstone. Yes, so she was a huge fan, always wearing the pastel nail polish that was the Hard Candy trademark. Was that shellac or was it? No, just, just, just a, normal just a, just a normal one. Yes. So really from, from that, and now um, I guess I have over 15 years experience, so... What was your first memories of, of makeup? Because, you know, I've read online about you and it, one of your first <laughs> memories of like a 12-year-old girl was this particular lipstick that you were yeah. almost enamoured with. It was <laughs> so special by the sounds of it. I think, well, that was back in the 80s. So when people were wearing like a shimmery pink lipstick, but now I'm very much about eyes. And I think my daughter's actually 13. So I think mascara is a sort of first product that we're kind of trying to experiment with. So she's certainly, and she and her friends are wearing mascara. So and that definitely is, is my go-to, my desert island product. It's a cutthroat industry. Um, what about actually getting into the making of it from the marketing side of PR then mm -hmm. actually going into the production of it? What got you into it? Because, you know, in the 80s and 90s, there was lots of uh, anti-vivisectionists and animal rights people mm. against the makeup industry. And, yes. uh, you know, since the 90s, they've been talking about the misuse of models. It's not always had the best reputation. What made you think, actually, I want to put my own stamp on something in here? Well, obviously, when I started, it was in the, in the noughties, in the early 2000s. And um, Ico is a brand we're very much against animal testing and a cruelty-free brand. And certainly, I think probably the testing happens in bigger companies and in the laboratories, but we work with suppliers and we use um, a lot of botanical ingredients that we, kn we know are safe that have been around for centuries, that, so nothing needs to be tested at all, really. It's an like, unnecessary process. Natural stuff. Uh, what's it like going against, uh, you know, as a businesswoman, what's it like going against your Estee Lauders and your L'Oreal's and these huge monolithic companies that have been around for, you know, over 100 years? Absolutely, but I think what's great is now consumers really seek out the niche brands and brands that specialise um, for us, for instance, because we do just eyes, so that's what sets us apart. You know you can come to Ico if you're looking for a mascara that really works, that delivers what it promises. We don't advertise our businesses very much through word of mouth, through social media. We're lucky to have so many beauty editors just loving the brand. And is that a good thing, the social media side of it, because you get uh, not just celebrities, but bloggers nowadays who are just specialising in makeup. You know, there's that uh, Geordie Lass that does excellent makeup tutorials. Once you get their patronage 
uh, it sort of works in a, in a cycle, doesn't it? They like you, you like them, and it builds and builds. You don't need to do traditional advertising on the back end of Cosmopolitan magazine anymore. Yeah, we don't actually do any traditional advertising at all because we are a small niche brand. And I think, um, like you said, bloggers and uh, social media is really just an extended word of mouth, and that's really the best endorsement any brand can have. And you're a really successful businesswoman. Uh, does it? Does it feel good to be a, a role model to young women? I know your daughter, 13, <laughs> but uh, other people, you know, trying to get interested in business. It's exciting for me. I don't feel I would have got to where I am now without having incredible mentors. And the one thing I think about the beauty industry is that it is a female dominated industry and everyone's actually very supportive and um, kind. So like people that I know like from Charlotte Tilbury, who's now got an amazing makeup line to incredible um, YouTubers and makeup artists like Lisa Eldridge, they're all like really championed ICO. And also now, because we actually launched an M&S and that came through a wonderful woman that's like a CEO at another brand. So, so I think- So it comes through friend is friendships and business at the same time. Yes, but I think it's, I think that's what's so lovely about the industry. So we kind of touched on the negative aspects, but I really, I feel there's so much more positive. It's like an incredible industry for women to get involved in. What would, what advice would you give for anybody who wants to get into the industry? Because, you know, you went through one type of route through PR. Yes, and unusual. Sort of got your grounding in marketing first, but, mm. you know, there's, uh, there's now degrees that you can do in, in pharmaceuticals that then take you to the makeup side. Yeah, that would be a completely different route going into um, research and development in a lab. I think with anything, like getting internships is like the best way. I think set, having that entrepreneurial spirit to and just set up your own brand is so much easier today than it was for me when I started. Now, I think you, all you need is like a laptop or just mm. your phone. Um, setting up like a, a website, having a good idea, social media. There's quite a lot of brands that have just started only it, on Instagram. It does sort of level the playing field, doesn't it? it because absolutely. you do have the bloggers, you've got your social media, you yeah. can set up your own company quite easily and yeah. you can go up against the big boys of L'Oreal and Estee Lauder. So it's quite, um, quite an interesting future. It is, it's a exciting times. And I think it's the sort of industry where you can, I mean, just when you are doing your own business, obviously just having that control over your own career trajectory is very empowering. And now, you know, I'm a mother of two. I, I don't have a nanny. I make my own hours and it's flexible. I'm working with my husband as well. So it's is, kind is of- that, Is that <laughs> working with your husband? <laughs> that, that's cha a challenge in itself, but then wonderful at this same time because we are a global brand so then traveling the world we go as a family you go as a unit that's quite yeah nice. me and my husband and now the kids as well and we enroll them into packing up goodie bags we just had a press trip in Thailand Singapore and oh God, Malaysia in the Easter holidays <laughs> and um, it was great with, where they were just making up all the goodie bags and everything so the kids get to see that side of the world and yeah. are they interested in it you know the 13 year old daughter she must be going well is this going to be a family business where I eventually take over. Do you know what's been really sweet? When she was 11, because she's been traveling, the kids have traveled with us ever, literally all over the world, she set up a little travel blog. So I <laughs> like just kind of, because she's been to so many places that um, is like not normal for a 13 year old. She's now just getting into mascara and um, where she goes to school, it's like there's a lot of celebrity kids. So that's It's my first time in Manchester. You've never been to Manchester never, before? Never, ever. Terrible. So, it's the birthplace so of the Industrial Revolution. I know, and it's a, such a beautiful city. We're here because of lovely M&S. So we've it's launched. It's a big M&S. It's a gorgeous big M&S. We are now in 78 M&Ss nationwide. We've followed our girl Alexa Chung um, into the stores. Before we were, you can find us in Space and K in uh, St Anne's Square as well. But the I think, apothecary Space and K. Yeah. Yes. But I think M&S is just amazing because everyone passes through, whether you're going to buy a sandwich or your knickers. So you just like pass through the beauty hall and check out Ico. Well, it's quite nice that a big British brand 
under coming in and, and backing another British brand and up Definitely, and coming more like yeah. yourself. Because I, I know uh, this brand particularly Through your because wife. my wife has it because the mascara is, comes in a squeezy thing. Exactly. You see um, with uh, mascara and stuff, it just comes in such hard cases it's that you awful. never get the whole stuff. But you so. can never access that last bit of mascara. Mm. You find yourself like scraping around the barrel, you start pumping the tube, which is so unhygienic. But with our mascaras, you squeeze out every last And that's drop. your USP, isn't it? The, that's the our USP, absolutely. We have these squeezy tubes. All our formulas are incredible. They're um, full of botanical blends, very natural. They don't come off, so you can like rub your eyes, so you get incredible results. You could, you know, swim in it. We even actually, we look, we have one, a sport one. Oh, wow. That you can and swim in. And it is in, quite nice that you beach. do get the endorsements from the celebrities and stuff. But, uh, yes, we've won you, loads of awards as well. Do you think I should ever wear a bit of eye cream? I've got a brow. I, I've, I've, I should have put the brow gel on I, you. I do have. I, well, I, your actually. Brows. And um, you have lovely long eyelashes, I do have don't very you? long eyelashes. Um, we could give them a curl. I was talking this weekend. Are they hitting your lenses? They hit my lenses all the time, but... Um, we'll curl them up after. Some of my, I was away this weekend with friends, and all the fellas, the alpha male of the group, saw me do my moisturiser, and I've got one of those roll-ons under my eyes. For the eyes. For the eyes and for the crow's feet. Yes. And he was questioning, he goes, what are you doing that for? What, what's the point of that? And I'm going, it makes me look good and it makes me feel you nice. You have lovely, fresh, dewy yeah. skin and eyes. You take but it care makes of you yourself. feel good, doesn't it? So it that, does. that's one of the main points what, about it. And that's what makeup is about, essentially. It is, and um, I think because we do focus specifically on mascara and just really about creating the world's best mascara, because it is that one product that's so transformative. Mm. It makes a difference on everybody. It's the one place you always look. Eyes. And you've got <laughs> fabulous eyes. Uh, Nina thank Lakin you. from ICO, thank you so much for joining thank us you on so a big much. bank head. Big pleasure. Uh, next, Wendy, uh, Wendy and AJ will be back with us sharing a passion or even having a rant with their something to say here on the Daily Rundown. Thank you for watching Channel 7.